Do you want to make beautiful builds in Valheim? For me, the wow factor often comes down to details in decorating. People tell me all the time that they don't know how to decorate. So in this series, I'm going to give you concrete ways to decorate and help you develop the creativity to make that beautiful build that you desire to show off. There are three main strategies that I keep in mind when decorating a build. I'll explain these and then give you nine and a half concrete examples with the techniques needed to make them happen. The first is functionality. What is the function of this space? Am I actually gonna be living here and using this space? If so, what makes sense for how things in this area will work most efficiently for me? For example, this may mean considering what I want within arm's reach of a workstation so that I'm not running all over the place or making sure that I, or many people, have enough room to all walk around and work in this space at the same time. If I'm not actually going to be using it, then I think about how would it function best if it was being used in the real world? What would be needed for it to be functional? And what are details that are used in the real world that I can find a way to recreate in the game? For example, do we really need sinks in the kitchen in Valheim? No, but they make sense in how a kitchen functions in the real world. At this blacksmith shop, I thought about how people would come up from the docks and need to find the blacksmith. So that gave me the idea for the sign. What if they come in at night? Let's create a lighted path. How will I bring in metal from the docks to the smelter? That created the cart path that leads directly to being able to load a smelter and have a place to park the cart. What if someone rides in on a horse? Here's a place to tie up and water your horse. No, we don't have horses in Valheim yet. But this leads to my second strategy. Develop a story. This may be as simple as how you're going to use this build or as elaborate as you would like. But having a story about who lives here or who uses this space for what purpose can inform how you do things and spark ideas of ways that the space would be decorated that are in line with that story and so gives it a cohesive feel. For example, in my hearth and home blacksmith shop, I imagined a blacksmith living there with his wife and two kids. This created many more ideas for the build than just putting together a forge with upgrades. I imagine this person would want to sell the weapons he makes, and so that led to creating a store at the front. People often lived in their shops, so that led to the house being attached in the back. He doesn't make a lot of money, so it's a simple home. There are two kids, so that led to a children's room. There's a river behind, so his little boy would like to fish there, which led to a dirt-worn path leading down to a simple dock. In my Ravenheim cafe, the cafe owner cares most about making good food and creating a welcoming feeling for the villagers. So her focus and how the build is decorated is mostly in the kitchen. There's lots of room for many kitchen workers and places for friends to stop by to sit and have a chat while cooking. She needs to have a workbench and forge to get things done, but it's not most important to her. So that's why it's just in a basement under the building instead of being elaborate. In my apothecary, shop, the apothecary is very secretive about how she develops her potions, and so there's a secret entrance that not everyone can get into where she brews her potions and has her secret ingredients, like this tub of evil gelatinous goo. Which leads me to the third strategy. Use things in unexpected ways. Don't only look at what something is supposed to be, but think about what it could also be used as. This may come from having your story and thinking about how can I create weird ingredients in here that aren't what you're used to seeing. Stemming from that, you may have a part of the story that leads you to finding ways to represent it. For example, at my tree house, I thought of it like the Weasley's house in Harry Potter where rooms just kept getting added on every time another dev came to stay with me. I didn't make the rooms look uniform to the build and how each room is decorated grows or organically. Sometimes this is literally looking at items, even parts of an item, to see what else it could look like or be used for. There's a lot of good phasing ability in Valheim's build system, which allows us to make good use of this, such as sinking the pot rack in the treehouse to look like a tray of dishes at the end of the kitchen bar, or using item stands to combine things and thus build something completely different. Let's look at how to make nine and a half 
specific decorating ideas from the blacksmith shop. And remember to stick around to the end for your quick tip. Examples. You don't always have to use a campfire or a giant hearth to get a fireplace in your house, especially if you're on the second floor or building on wood. Here's a way to use a brazier as a small fireplace in your house. It may look like this brazier is just hanging outside the house, but actually it's sitting on a floor, a wooden floor no less. The way this works is that initially to get the brazier in the location that you want it, you do have to hang it from something. But once it's there, as long as you provide it support and you can decide at what level you want that support to be, just don't put it completely on top so that it puts the fire out unless that's the look you're going for as well because there's a lot of uses for that but we'll get to some of those in another video you can now support it with a floor underneath get rid of the support above and because it was already placed there the brazier will stay sitting on wood then you can turn this into whatever you want it to be just remember it is going to need ventilation just like any other fire and there you have fire in a wood box. Place things at different angles and different levels of phasing and then weather them so they look slightly more used or deteriorated by time. When weathering rocks or coal piles, it might be better to use the antler pickaxe or the bronze pickaxe because the iron one will sometimes completely destroy the pile in one hit. You notice when I'm walking up the path that I have torches sunk into the ground to make a lighted path. This is how you do it. Just decide where you want your light to be. Make a quick hole as deep as you'd like it. Place the light at the bottom. Then use your hoe to bring the ground back up to the level that you want it at. Remember to stand on the level of the ground that you want to raise it to. And when need be, you can use shift click to even out any edges. Cultivator puts the grass back and there you go, a sunken torch. Using something for the look of it or the effect that it gives rather than what it's actually intended for is a trick that I used to chill this meat. Can you guess what it is? My favorite weapon of all, the Frostner. Look at the chill effect coming off that thing. So to keep my meat nice and chilled, what I did was first put down an item stand, attach the Frostner, then use the one by one floor pointing at the backboard behind it so that I can get it as low as I want for the Frostner to show or not show. That could be used for some interesting effects too right there. Hmm, I wonder what you guys will come up with from that. Then add some item stands for the items that I want to keep chilled. Just turn them at little bit different directions so they don't look too uniform here. And there you go, meat on ice. One of the things that I'm always looking at is how can I add more color into my build? We have a lot of brown in our wood houses and the stone doesn't add a lot of color either. One of the best ways to add a big pop of color is colored shields. Now these can be used in a lot of different ways, but one of my favorite ways is to make a colorful tablecloth. Once you make your colored shields, all you have to do is line up the item stands so that they correctly cover the table. And when you wanna put things on the table, just make sure that you stack item stands high enough as many times as you need to, to get the items to come up above your tablecloth. Then you put the items on in the order that you need to in order to be able to reach everything. Here I used multiple levels of item stands to get the cloud berries as high as they need to be because they sit lower so that they wouldn't cut through my platter. Shields are very useful. To use something not in the way it was intended, I put some fish on this cooking station but I didn't want it to turn into coal. I just wanted it to sit there by my tanning rack, looking like it was being dried out. A simple way to do this is place down a campfire, put your cooking station over it, and attach your fish or meat, whatever you want. If I break this fire now, 
the fish remain hanging there forever. Or I could get another look by letting them go ahead and get cooked. Break it before they turn to coal. Now we have smoked fish. This is one of my favorite little repurposes of an object. I came up with this before we had armor stands as a way to show a coat on a hook. All I did was put a Dusquito trophy on a vertical item stand. Then I got my Wraith trophy, put an item stand just above it. Sometimes it's a little bit fidgety. You just gotta play with the locating it a little bit. And there you go, a coat on a coat hook. When I decided to do a kid's room for my blacksmith family, I knew that I was gonna have to find some different ways to make things look kid friendly. One of the classics is to use word art, of course. So many uses for that with signs. And then I took items from the game that could potentially look like toys. So I added a little neck plushie on the bed, friendly little guy sitting on the shelf, and scattered some toys on the floor in front of the toy box. So it looks like someone's just been playing and left their stuff setting out. It's another way of making it look like someone's been here. Now if only we could get a cute trophy. This video is sponsored by Hosty Z. Hosty Z provides dedicated server hosting with the right amount of high quality hardware and bandwidth that you need for a smooth experience. See the link and discount code below to get your server set up and start playing with your friends right away. Another detail that I added coming up from the docks is also to have a path going here that's worn out to the horse trough. Don't leave your horse unwatered. It would make sense that they would have horses. And so this is a realistic touch that I added in of something that would make sense to be there even though it's not technically being used. So I made a hitching post with beams, a water trough with signs, a forge cooler on the side to help refill it, and I made this path dirt, like the horses have just walked up here and worn it out a bit. But over here I used the cultivator to make the ground look wet and muddy, like where the horses have been standing there and the water has been slopping out. I think it gives it a little bit more of a touch of realism and makes it look a little distinct too. And for your little half of a tip, I've mentioned some of it here and there, but think about how the roads and paths would look naturally. Some places it makes sense to have it to be paved. Some places it makes sense for it to be dirt or wet. And don't just keep the width that the game gives you automatically for your paths. Think about how the paths would be worn naturally, like this little dirt path here where the kids just run out to this tiny little homemade dock to go fishing. It's nothing fancy and it doesn't need to be super wide. So bring in the grass and make it a natural slope. For more ideas for using the cultivator and how to make smooth paths, check out one of these videos at the top. And now for your quick tip, especially when you're new in the game, or starting a new save, you want to find a lot of burial chambers in the Black Forest, right? An easy way to have them pointed out to you every time is that when you first come upon one, don't talk to Hugin. He wants to tell you about that burial chamber, but if you just don't listen to him, he'll help you find the next one too, even if you were about to run right by it. Thanks Hugin! Happy gaming!